Laura, black holes are part of the both conventional wisdom about how galaxies are structured, they're the center of most, if not every galaxy, as well as being a test bed for the laws of quantum physics and quantum cosmology because of the extreme properties. Uh, so th that's, that's the reality of today's world. Black holes are really important for both observation and for theory. You have challenged some of the traditional thinking about black holes. What have you done and why? Black holes have a long history in, in, in um, reminding us of, of aspects of uh, quantum mechanics uh, we don't understand and also of the fact that we need quantum gravity. Um, from a general relativity point of view, black holes are just big stars, big dead stars that collapse to, to their center and produce this exotic object known as the singularity. All our equations break down there, so we can't study singularity, we do not understand singularity. Basically infinite de uh, density. Infinite energy density at the center of the star. Um, there, there are speculations that maybe that pinches the very fabric of space-time and, and gets us traveling into another universe. There uh, are a million speculations. Um, there are many speculations, but, but the <coughs> truth is we, we do not understand what singularities are and there is no way we can uh, make progress with understanding them because all our theories <coughs> break down. On the other hand, um, the, the uh, major discovery mm. Stephen Hawking uh, did in the, made in the 70s um, yeah. was that black holes are not completely black, but they radiate. They, they give away Hawking radiation. And he found that effect through quantum mechanics. Because uh, at the boundary, you have the uncertainty principle generating virtual particles. And yeah. if you're right at the edge, potentially one particle will be on one side of the of the of the a black hole horizon and the other particle on the other side so one can escape and one can't so that that prevents them from uh, combining and yeah. annihilating themselves. Well, we, we can think of Hawking radiation in that way that uh, a pair of particles out of the fabric of space-time, out of vacuum near the horizon of a black hole, is being split apart, separated to the particle falling inside the black hole and the uh, partner, the antiparticle, flying away to infinity and, and giving rise to Hawking radiation. Uh, there, there are many ways to think of Hawking radiation, but it is a quantum effect. So. If we study black holes using quantum mechanics, we, we get two things. We get Hawking radiation from the black holes, and we also get uh, something known as the information loss paradox. Quantum mechanics says information about a system can never be lost. That's the unitarity principle. But yet we know from the classical nature of black holes that anything that goes into the black hole will never come out again. It will go all the way to, sing, uh, to the singularity, and who knows what happens yeah. from that point on? We don't know what singularities are. So that, that's a very disturbing fact because if we trust Einstein's theory of gravity, we end up with this classical black hole with an exotic singularity in the center that can pinch off the universe itself. If we trust quantum mechanics, then we get Hawking radiation out of a black hole, but we also get a paradox that says the only way to get Hawking radiation is uh, if you don't trust on the classical nature, but, but you trust on the, on the quantum nature. So it, it seems that we're in a position, that that's, that's the big challenge we get out of black holes. We're in a position where either we understand quantum gravity, which we don't yet, or we give up in uh, general relativity or quantum mechanics. We can't use both because they, they reach contradicting results where black holes are concerned. So my, my work on, on this subject was um, uh, involved in studying the evolution of a star as it's collapsing in, in, in trying to create a black hole and um, including the effect of Hawking radiation onto the star itself, on the collapse of the star itself. And, and my calculation, but, but that was based in a lot of approximations, so it's, it's a very rough um, model on, on what might actually really happen inside, inside a, a star collapsing into a black hole. But, but those preliminary results show that it is possible that Hawking radiation can stop the formation of a singularity at the center of a black hole. So instead of a black hole, in fact, we might end up with a black star. Uh, from the outside, for all pr uh, practical purposes, it does look like a black hole, but if by any means we were able to, to look inside, to peek inside this star, then we would not find a singularity at the center, nothing exotic at the center. And in that case, uh, we don't end up with the information loss paradox. So the difference that you're saying is rather than a singularity at the center of the black, coal, yeah. you have something that's not a singularity, mm -hmm. but 
arguably is denser than a neutron star? Um, it, it's about the same as the neutron star. So yeah. it's about the same? Because theoretically a neutron star, before you get a black hole, is, is as dense as you can yeah. get. Yeah, exactly. So is, so is your thing at the center of the b black hole horizon, is that like a neutron? It can't it, be a neutron very star. No, it, it, it's, so that's why I'm calling it a black star. It, what, what's happening to, to this star collapsing towards the center and meanwhile being fed uh, by, by Hawking radiation as well, um, that, that radiation is trying to slow down the collapse all the way to, uh, to one uh -huh, point. Uh -huh, that, that's how singularity uh -huh. is avoided. Uh -huh. And the star kind of bounces back to a new state uh -huh. of equilibrium. So, so how, how big would it be, I mean, depending upon the mass? Very, very small, how, very how, small. How, how, um, uh, a few Planck masses. Oh, a few Planck masses, because yeah, a neutron yeah. star theory can be, you know, 10 kilometers or something with, yeah, a, with the true, mass yeah. of uh, no, a huge would, number yeah. of suns yeah. in, in 10 kilometers. So, so you're dealing with on the, on the Planck scale. In, on the Planck scale, yeah. And, and what's been the reaction to your proposal? I, I was quite surprised by the reaction because uh, when, when I looked at this problem, I, I was looking at it from a pure scientific curiosity. Here is a set of mathematical equations that, that I can solve. And if I include Hawking radiation into the picture, which has not been done until now, perhaps I'll get a new result. Uh, that, and that result was avoiding the singularity. I, I never felt emotionally attached to, to black holes or black stars, but to my surprise, when, when, when these papers, uh, when I put them out, there was a huge reaction okay. from, from the public as well as the scientific community on, on both sides. People that absolutely abhor the idea of a black hole and people that absolutely love the black holes. And I, it, that took me by surprise, but I can only imagine that part of the reason is Hollywood. There, there are so many <laughs> science fiction movies that, that feed into this fantasy of what happens near a black hole and tunneling into another universe through a black hole. That, uh, that could be why people felt so strongly about something that to me is just a star, like billions of other stars. So you're puncturing all these Hollywood visions. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. It's uh, a lot more work needs to be done before we, we have a high degree of confidence that the singularity is not there. And, and I'm working on that now as well. One, one of them being, nobody had studied what Hawking radiation looks like inside the black hole. That, that's a mathematically difficult problem, but without it, it's hard to see what that radiation does to the star, to the collapse of the star.